Spiritato. Greetings, everybody, and thank you for inviting me. It's uh, a pleasure to be here. Peter Moss, um, who some of you might know, I'm, I'm a fan of his writings on early childhood education. And in this quotation here, he is critiquing the macro level of national curriculum development, of which Tafariki is part of. Now here this evening, you as a profession are the micro level of curriculum implementation, alongside, of course, the children and the whānau. You are the weavers. Um, I think I'm very much a secondary, a secondary weaver at the back. But your weaving does sit in a political context, nationally and internationally which is also part of the weaving because Te Whāriki is a national curriculum framework. It's a political document. And we need to ask, who is doing the weaving now? Who has their hands on the harakeke, or the loom, if we want a European example? And for what political and pedagogical purposes? Now, I'm not going to read out Moss's statement, but I do love it, because Moss, Peter is warning about the danger of the role of the policy wonks, and I just love the term, the policy wonks. And I hope I'm not one of them. <laughs> in shaping the patterns of the day-to-day -day weaving, and in particular, standardising the patterns and determining the outcomes. Now, we cannot avoid the policy wonks because they are the ones we have to persuade to fund the infrastructure that's needed to implement the curriculum. Though I take on board Joss's comments, it is not just infrastructure that we, we have to have. But for us, the important thing is ensuring that the policy infrastructure privileges professional judgment about what learning matters. And we are the professions who make that judgment. Yesterday, um, I was at the Auckland Kindergarten Association conference and several people there came up to me afterwards and said, oh, are you saying the same thing tomorrow night? And I said, well, no, because I've got nine minutes now and I had an hour yesterday. <laughs> but I did want to put this slide up because some of you might have been there. I was asked to take a long-term view of Te Whāriki because it's 25 years since the project was initiated by government. So like Moss, this was a macro-level overview. But because of the audience and the kindergarten historical work I've been doing, I was looking at the pedagogical contribution that kindergarten made to the curriculum framework that became Te Whāriki, but also how that was woven by teachers into a distinctive kindergarten Whāriki. Now, there's much of interest in the Tafariki story, New Zealand and internationally. And I have had many variations of this front piece slide over the past few years. I just keep altering the title of it and putting up a new, a new location, basically. But right from the start, we understood, and I'm talking about Margaret and myself and um, Tilly and Tamati Reedy, in particular, who we are working with, that we, this was a political document. It was also have to have a political journey, but that the crux of the implementation was with the teachers working with children in Farnau. So Te Whāriki's always been in the hands of teachers. It's about professional judgment, as I said, concerning what learning matters. And these are interesting times with the review of the implementation, and it's a great opportunity. But there are also challenges, because government is wanting to see more measurable outcomes, evidence of value for money, and yes, there is evidence that we as a profession could be doing better. Now I want to, as this is a union occasion, I want to put up something from the past. One of the notable things about Te Whāriki has been the ownership by, of the document by the profession, to the extent that the draft curriculum in 1993 was not launched by the government, they didn't seem to want to know about it, or the Ministry of Education, but by the union. It was not NZEI then, it was Secua. Was there anybody there at that conference? Wow, thank you, Nola. Right, wow. <laughs> okay, and Margaret and I were there too. <laughs> okay, now we were the keynote speakers at its launch and so the journey of implementation began. I'm going to read what we said. These were the opening comments of our presentation. I think we stood jointly on the stage. I don't think we jointly read it, but this occasion is most timely in coinciding with the release of Te Whāriki to centres this week. In workshops today, 
we will be suggesting ideas for beginning to use the document. But it's you as practitioners, note we didn't use teachers, who will decide whether the curriculum can be made to work for children or whether it remains a glossy production on the shelf. I think if somebody had told us 25 years later I'd be up here reading this, I wouldn't have believed it. Um, it's most fitting that it is the union that has taken the lead in setting up this conference and that so many people working in early childhood have travelled all around New Zealand to a conference that is not about wages and conditions, and by golly it could have been, or bulk funding where there was blood on the floor in those years, or the election, grim as these things might be, but have come to listen, debate, talk and learn about early childhood curriculum and most of all to be thinking about the children we work with. A little while ago I interviewed a teacher who was at that conference too. She was a kindergarten teacher. And this was her, you can read the comments, I'm not going to, I won't read it out to you. But it was interesting, that's what she said they did when they went back to the kindergarten, they got out the strings and started thinking, where does it all go? Now everybody began their weaving in some way. And we certainly probably became a lot more sophisticated at it, but this is where it started. And the weaving was never intended to be fully woven from the start. This was certainly the case with assessment. The contract required us to make statements of principle, which we did. Assessment is embedded in the curriculum. It's framed around the principles of Tafariki. But what that might look like, we didn't know at that stage and the contribution of Margaret firstly for the research and the policy engagement to envisage and realise this, I think has become one of the internationally renowned stories of Te Whareke, but also made possible by the teachers who engaged in the process. Anne Smith has, I think, made a lovely statement. It's been the catalyst to lively debate, new conversations about learning and teaching, which in turn have been woven into its fabric. It sparked research studies, drilled deep into the life of early childhood centres to see how curriculum is constructed, enacted and engaged with the question of how do you change practice. And there's been a roller coaster of new ideas in early childhood in this country, alongside a roller coaster of policy. And there's been rolling in and rolling out. Now I showed this next slide to the kindergarten teachers yesterday, but please don't try and read it. But the blue is under national, <laughs> the red is under labour, and the blue again is under national. And what we call Tafariki today is a much more fully woven curriculum than its originally stated principles, strands and goals. It's the implementation that is the actual Tafariki that makes a difference. So what's shaped this implementation at the macro level? And this slide lists a summary of some of that. Much more detail could be included, but we've got different political interests, times of climate, times of famine. What you see is a mix of professional development, research resources, industrial conditions with political investment and funding and qualification. But those implementation drivers have not all come from government. They've come from organisations, they've come from the union, they've come from teachers. Just to summarise then, what lessons have we learnt in Aotearoa so far? I'm not going to read all of these, um, I can leave this available, but let's just look at perhaps two. And this is a slide I've shown on a number of international venues, because people sort of say, how did you get it to work? You know, what have, we, what have you learnt? And this is my summary of it. It has required collaboration with the early childhood sector, challenging the sector and resourcing the sector. It also has required a mix of political courage to raise and enforce standards and regulations alongside enabling a professional independence and judgment. And crafting those through has not been easy and we have swings and roundabouts on them. My own summary of issues, um, and of course we're waiting to see what the recommendations are for JOSS's working party on implementation. How brave will the government be in terms of resourcing the profession and addressing not only early childhood education but the early years of schooling if we are really serious about continuity of learning? Whose hand is going to shape the questions of outcomes and evidence? On this occasion tonight, the profession is again taking the high ground and we've seen this as one of the strengths. 
And my final slide is uh, just going back to that broad international context. Somebody who I've really found, really enjoyed their work is Pamela Oberhomer, who, like Peter Moss, has addressed the global politics of curriculum, because we do sit in this global world. And we've seen many of these issues that she summarises, I think, very well in an article in the played out in the politics of curriculum in this country. And again, I'm not going to read them, you can sort of see them. And what she's saying is there may be tensions that, that she, she identifies three tensions. And these global challenges are enacted on a daily basis in your centres, your kindergartens, as you weave your whariki. So we do have some interesting times ahead. And my final slide is <laughs> a bit of history. <laughs> Let's conclude two scholarly ladies who were once a childcare worker and a kindergarten teacher collating the original papers of Te Whariki for posterity, which are now housed in the Turnbull collections of the National Library in Wellington. So we have put it to bed. It's gone. <laughs> this again indicates that we can take a long-term view of Te Whariki now, 23 years since our work was completed, this was the beginning of a weaving that is still being woven by you. Thank you.